Welcome back to the winter 2023-24 update one and part two. Now, what is quite important is the like I've like I said in the previous video, if the El Nino is strongest against the South American coast, you can pretty much bet your bottom dollar that winter is going to be fairly warm and fairly typical in terms of the UK and Ireland here, and indeed northwestern Europe. But if you tend to find that the warmest waters peel away from the South American coast towards the Central Pacific, which the CFSV2, as you can see here, is doing so, the projections, both um, in Nino Region 1.2 and 3.4, is indicating that there's going to be a drop-off. That would indicate that the El Nino is not going to be strong to super strong by the time we reach the winter season here so these are some very interesting key parameters you notice here particularly region 1.2 which like i said is already closest to the south american coast we've got water temperatures plus three and then we're starting to see quite a drop off especially if, uh, through the first half of september there's been a notable drop in temperature almost a full one celsius a full degree drop in temperature Notice here that we by the uh, towards the very end here, so in the last seven days, we have seen a little bit of a rise back again. But it's going to be interesting to see what happens over the next two to three months with regards to the the warmest waters. Were the fall, that's going to be quite quite important as we go towards the winter season. Now the Manjulian oscillation, which I touched on in the previous video, was also very important. Now if you notice here. These numbers, this indicates the various phases of the Man Julian oscillation. Phases one, two, three, all the way up to eight. The, the phases of doom when it comes to the North, North Atlantic and Europe pattern, even North America to an extent as well, is when you get the strongest upward motion between phases three and phases six. So that is um, East Indian Ocean and through the Indonesia and Australia region. When you've got the strongest upward motion through the atmosphere in this region of the world, that tends to lead to a positive Arctic oscillation, which is lower pressure over the equatorial region, or not the equatorial region, sorry, the Arctic region. So when you've got lower heights, so cold tends to be collected. It remains blocked up within the Arctic especially when you've got phases four, five, and six, even three as well. But when you have the phases, the upward motion going from six, seven, eight, and into one, and you notice here that the CFSV2, this is for November, this is for December, and this is for January, we've got upward motion focused over the central portion of the Pacific, which would correlate to phase um, seven, eight, and one. Now, if you look at this chart here by Marco Patagna, this is quite nicely put together. You see phases 6, 7, 8 in the 1. That indicates northerly blocking, Greenland high pressure, negative NAO, cold UK winter. So it's interesting what the CFSV2 is indicating with regards to the areas of upward motion. And this would correlate to the uh, both the... El Nino and the Indian Ocean Dipole, the consequence of that, remember warmest waters over the west portion of the Indian Ocean, upward motion, sinking where the waters are cooler and extending into the far west Pacific, but then you've got an area of upward motion here over the central portion of the Pacific. Remember that the models are indicating the warmest water peeling away from South America towards the central Pacific which in turn would be favourable if you're looking for a cold winter. Now, the Indian Ocean Dipole, very important. Looks as if we've got the most positive IOD, by the way, since 2019. Not good news, I know, but it's nowhere near as strong as the 2019 event, as you can see here. And it looks as if this is the general overall circulation with it, the positive IOD, upward motion over the western portion of the Pacific uh, Indian Ocean, sinking over the e uh, eastern portion of the Indian Ocean. And of course, that correlates to reduced rainfall and drought conditions over Indonesia and Australia, as you can see here. But notice here, this is according to the international model ensembles. 
We've got the strong positive IOD in October. December, it weakens, still positive. And by the time we reach February, it looks as if we're edging closer to the neutral. So it indicates to me that we see a kind of decrease in the strength of the IOD as we press through the late autumn and into the early portion of the winter. And that could be quite important, folks, when it comes to the winter season. Annual change in SSTs, very warm across the North Atlantic here, somewhat to an extent uh, across and west of North America. But notice the level of cooling over the Indian Ocean, the South Atlantic and the South Pacific over the last uh, 12 months. That's quite interesting to see. This article is on marfoganweather.com, but I haven't finished it yet. But I will have this published for everybody to see and I'll share it with you on Facebook and Twitter. So that's it for today. Hope you have enjoyed the content. Be sure to like, uh, share and subscribe if you haven't already done so. If you're interested in this in a more detailed way, I will have update number two in the next few weeks here, probably in the, the early and middle portion of October. And I'll allude and, and you know, show more, talk more about all these various elements and where I think we're going. But certainly there's a lot of things uh, for you to consider, uh, plenty of food for thought. Uh, leave a comment in the section below and let me know what you thought about today's video, the content. And uh, I'll be back again, hopefully tomorrow with more. So stay tuned, like, share and subscribe and bye for now.